You guys, what's going on? It's Constantine, aka Smart Cloud Commenters. Now I'm gonna make this into a really quick, pretty much as a free for all, where I come back from 550 points down. And first thing I want to say, thank you very much for subscribing. It means a lot. 88 subscribers in in four days is amazing. So I want to thank you guys for that. And also, send in gameplays because my PS3 broke and I only have two or three uh, saved up. So send them into my inbox. They need to be HD. And uh, I'll give you credit and everything. So now into today's topic, which is light and what it is and how it works. Thanks. So pretty much light, or visible light, is uh, an electromagnetic radiation that is visible to the human eye and responsible for, for sight. And it, it, it makes, it's why we can see and um, pretty much it reflects off of uh, objects in the world and that's how we see them. So pretty much um, light is emitting uh, photons, which are groups or as I've seen them called packets, where they sh uh, are admitted in both waves and particles, and this part, of this uh, this property is known as the wave-particle duality. But I'm not going to get into that. That's just a whole long description, and I'll I'll put a little link in the description so you guys can go check that out. But it's just uh, a long description about some theory about the waves and particles and and light. So pretty much, photons are emitted from atoms, and atoms have electron. Uh, principal energy levels and, and electron shells and when electrons go to outer shells um, for example when um, <clears throat> when fluorine goes up to a higher energy shell and, it, and uh, the electron comes back down into its normal energy state that's when light is emitted uh, when photons are emitted and that's what we can see uh, however the photon is massless it has no mass has no electric charge and does not uh, decay in empty space. So how come we can see some light? Well, there's an electromagnetic spectrum, which I'm sure many of you have seen before. If you're not sure what that is, I'll post a, a video of it on the in the video. That doesn't make sense, but you'll see. And um, pretty much the left side of it, uh, of the spectrum, are gamma rays, which are found in uh, like nuclear bombs when they go off. That's what hits people, gamma rays, uh, as well as other rays and other types of bombs. But uh, they have the highest frequency and the smallest wavelengths. And then X-rays come next and UV rays, and all of those are not visible to the naked human eye. Then comes the visible light spectrum, which many of you may know as Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. This visible light um, wave, these, with these visible light waves, excuse me, range from 400 nanometers and the color indigo, and they go from indigo all the way across the whole spectrum back up to red, which is 700 nanometers, and um, then come more wavelengths that, that are invisible to the human eye, starting up with infrared light, then microwaves, then FM waves, then ra AM wa radio waves, then longer radio waves on the right side, and so on and so forth. And um, there's also white light, which is what we see uh, a lot of the time, and that uh, pretty much when you shoot that through a prism, it splits up into all the colors of the rainbow, and that's what well, many of you guys have seen before on like the cover of On the Other Side of the Moon, I think it is, by uh, Led Zeppelin. And uh, that's also how we see rainbows. And rainbows have little tiny droplets of water in the sky after it rains. And when the sun shines through them, the all eight, uh, seven colors, uh, not eight colors, all seven colors of the white light are split up, and that's how we see rainbows. Another uh, spectacle, I guess, of light is... Lightning, which is an atmospheric static discharge, which is usually seen at, in thunderstorms, but sometimes can be seen in volcanic eruptions and dust storms. And from this discharge, uh, there's a bolt of lightning, and that lightning travels at speeds of 220,000 kilometers per hour, or 140,000 miles per hour, and can reach temperatures of 30,000 degrees Celsius, or 54,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is ridiculously hot. Another major source of light that many people tend to think of is the sun. However, only 40% of the sun's light is actually visible, and everything else is, uh, is black light and UV rays and stuff like that. And that's why there's so many cool pictures of the sun with like uh, special cameras. And uh, yeah, flames are also visible. And uh, as their temperatures increase, the peaks of the, the light shift to shorter wavelengths, producing at first a red glow, then a white glow, then finally uh, a blue color. This blue color isn't really seen that often because um, blue light isn't really 
blue thermal emission isn't really seen that often, but the people that commonly see blue in is a gas flame or a welder's torch, and uh, that's actually due to molecular emission. But uh, one quick property that I want to talk about is reflection and refraction, and uh, uh, pretty much reflection is when the light bounces off something else, and that's when um, it really actually gets temporarily absorbed and then shot out quickly, and you can't even tell it's getting absorbed, but that's what it is. And there's also a theory where light exerts physical pressure on objects, like on asteroids and stuff like that, where uh, the photons in light actually strike an object and affect their momentum, which is actually kind of weird. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a rating, and thank you. Bye. Alright guys, so that was the end of the commentary, but it was really, really bad. I was rushing to finish up with the gameplay, so if you guys want to hear a more detailed description of uh, reflection, reflection, refraction, and uh, a really interesting theory about light exerting pressure, uh, just stick around. If not, uh, leave comments for a future video, what you want to see, and uh, subscribe and like the video. It really helps me get noticed, and uh, so I'm just going to talk until I finish my little written section here. Uh, pretty much... Uh, reflection and refraction, refraction, as many people seem to think, uh, are actually absorption and emission. Pretty much, uh, if that doesn't make sense, when electrons, for example, those of, of silicon and let's say germanium, are bombarded with photons, they absorb their energy, and for a quick, quick fraction of a second, the photon stops being observable as visible light, and then... Uh, the electron immediately, almost immediately, emits a photon in the opposite direction, producing a kind of effect that light looks like it's traveling slowly when it passes through uh, through water or something else like that. Uh, and we can't really observe that. It, it's happened so quickly that we can't really tell in everyday scenarios and stuff like that. But we know that the speed of light is always constant, almost always constant. And that... Therefore, it's not possible, and it just becomes uh, invisible for a quick fraction of a second. So, um, an atom itself, it, it wants to be in its most natural state, and it doesn't really want to take in photons and stuff like that and create an imbalance in its, in its shape and its, its, genetic, its genetic makeup. But it, you guys know what I'm trying to say. It doesn't want to create an imbalance. So uh, it ejects the energy of the photon, and the energy just gets shot out, I guess. <laughs> I don't really know how to explain it any better than that. Uh, I'm sorry, that was really bad. And uh, light also exerts its physical pressure on objects in its path, a, um, a phenomena which is, uh, let's see how to explain this. Uh, I think there's a guy named Maxwell. Uh, this guy Maxwell made some equations, something like that, and uh, pretty much, I'm going to shorten it up, what he said, uh, pretty much, um, hmm, photons can exert a physical pressure, I guess, on objects, and photons, they strike an object, and they e emit a pressure, but you, you don't feel that pressure on your skin, you feel it, uh, well, you don't feel it actually at all, but like a good example is uh, asteroids in space. And the asteroids have like, these jagged edges, and it, the light in that big open space is going at 3,000, 300,000 kilometers per hour. It would affect kind of its, um, its momentum, and it's not really observable and hasn't really been proven, but that's what we seem to think. So I'm sorry for that sloppy half of the commentary. Just... Leave a comment on what you guys want to see commentaries about. Uh, leave a rating and a like or dislike, and it really helps. And if you saw the video up to this point, if you guys are the loyal subscribers, uh, I would love it if you guys said pool table, because I am right now right next to my pool table, and that's what I'm looking at right now as I'm commentating. So I'm really sorry about that rushed kind of ending there in the beginning. And the second explanation, I was kind of going off of uh, the top of my head and seeing what I remembered. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, leave ideas for future videos. I can't stress that enough. And I hope you enjoyed this lovely gameplay behind me right now. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.